what is going on ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another video in this one we'll be doing the real world su-33 carrier approach and landing i don't believe anybody's ever done this on youtube i don't think i've ever seen a video showing the exact way to land an su-33 like they do it in real life so i thought it'd be the first one and show you guys how it's done information on this is extremely limited so we'll be using the only source that i have ever seen for such an approach and landing and I believe this is what the Russians used to land SU-33s. It is a little bit different compared to Case 1 for the F-18 or an F-14 on the Nimitz class carriers. I believe this is a lot more challenging and takes a lot more skill, effort and patience to try and get this one right. So without further ado, sit back and enjoy how it's done. You're clear to the and the heads out. We'll see you on the left with the pin. Thanks a lot. Alright, here we are then approaching the carrier at 600 odd kilometers an hour and we're aiming for 180 meters although we don't have a speed or a height gate passing the carrier at this point. Uh, the only thing we really care about is making the turn passing 2 kilometers after the carrier so we need to set the HUD to landing mode which is what I've done there passing 1.8, 1.9, 2 kilometers making a left turn. Now unlike the Nimitz class carriers where you pull a lot of G uh, over here the circuit's a lot bigger you're looking to roll out a beam that carries six to seven kilometers uh, which is considerably more than the 1.1 to 1.3 nautical miles you might do for a case one of the Nimitz class uh, so you're pulling a really nice um, 2g around the corner there so you try to keep the vsi on zero we're looking for 180 meters our gate passing a beam the carrier there uh, will be at uh, 180 meters which is what we're trying to keep right now it'll be at 270 kilometers an hour which is about 145 knots uh, so rita is telling me to extend the gear here which is what we're doing and we are wanting to be about six to seven kilometers uh, this ship right here is around about six kilometers uh, of being the carrier so uh, it's a good reference point so we're looking for that gate uh, see if we can nail that that is the most important thing so now we're rolling out we've got 180 ish uh, meters 270 kilometers an hour bang on we're uh, rolling out and heading 270 uh, the base recovery course is a 360 so that is nice and easy passing beam the carrier now we're looking to start the turn at around about 6.3 if we have six kilometers looking for 6.3 to start the turn uh, because uh, we're wanting to roll out at about two kilometers uh, behind the boat and uh, that uh, using uh, Pythagoras theorem you can work out 6.3 puts us there nicely the boat is also moving quite uh, quite fast about 15 knots I believe in this case so uh, that's also something to take into account once we roll out on crosswind we are looking to uh, turn a little bit more than 90 degrees to adjust for the wind so 090 would be normal uh, but for us to account for the wind will be 080, maybe a little bit less than 080. So we're trying to nail that 180 meters constantly and get the speed within that range of about 270 kilometers an hour. Um, as you can see, the AOA indicator on the left of the HUD currently uh, is showing that we are a little bit fast uh, for on-speed AOA, but that's fine because we are not currently on our base recovery course, not on final approach yet. So uh, we don't worry about that for uh, too much uh, currently. And the SU-33 is a real, real challenge to try and uh, finesse. I believe it is a little bit too twitchy um, compared to a lot of other aircraft. And uh, trying to get that speed as well is quite difficult. Use the auto throttle to your advantage. I am using the auto throttle here sometimes. Uh, when you get a little bit of uh, extra wind uh, over the wings for some reason I think it increases the speed and it just keeps a little bit higher to the what you set it to so you might need to just reset it um, and get it a little bit slower uh, now final approach here uh, we're looking to be under 25 tons 
uh, for landing and we're looking for a speed of about 240, 230. That is where we'll be on speed AOA uh, for the airplane. And we're rolling out. We're looking to be at least uh, two kilometers behind the boat. As you can see here, my circuit was a little bit longer. I actually rolled out at a good three kilometers. So you can keep that a little bit tighter. Uh, asking for landing clearance. And we've got the clearance to land. Uh, so at this point, we are looking at the ILS signal in the HUD uh, aligning the uh, small circle with the big circle. Uh, and uh, everything needs to be extremely gentle at this point. You're looking at your speed, you're disconnecting the auto throttle now and uh, trying to get that AOA. There it is, it's bang on. We're looking at 240 kilometers an hour uh, on speed AOA uh, and looks like it's the right glide. So you're just finessing it and uh, you're looking at the little indicator on, on the bottom of the speed uh, to show you the speed trend, uh, which is either increase or decrease. It currently it's stationary there at 240. So trying to keep it there, trying to get that uh, green AOA indicator. Unfortunately for the Kuznetsov there is no optical landing system lights overlay like you get from the Nimitz class carrier so it is a little bit difficult to make out. Um, so at this point I think well, just dipped a little bit and then ballooned slightly and then got back on profile uh, to capture the third wire. So I think that was uh, pretty good overall. It is quite challenging to finesse the SU-33. I think it's a little bit twitchy sometimes. Uh, I think this whole entire circuit is way more challenging. Uh, it requires a lot more concentration and precision to try and nail compared to uh, one for the Nimitz class, uh, the case one. Nonetheless, I thought this was very interesting because uh, I believe this is the way they do it in uh, real life and obviously not having the flight path vector uh, for the SU-33 makes life a lot more challenging, a lot more difficult. Uh, more modern Sukhoi aircraft, they do have uh, flight path vectors for landing. So let's briefly go over the circuit once again. Uh, there is no height or speed gate as you pass uh, a beam the carrier initially on your base recovery course. After two kilometers with a HUD in landing mode, make the break left and then roll out six to seven kilometers up in the boat on the reciprocal heading and uh, you're looking for 270 kilometers an hour, 180 meters. After that you continue the circuit left turn to roll out two kilometers behind the boat and after that it is all normal landing procedures. So with that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please smash the living daylight of the like button if you could. Subscribe to future videos and hopefully I'll catch you in the next one. Adios.